Get her up, get her up, get those legs up. When the one thing that's supposed to come naturally never comes at all. Yeah, she's trying real hard. Dozens of volunteers from all over the country come to help. But each time she tries, we are there to help her get up. Because <clears throat> if she doesn't get up, she's going to die. This mayor, tired and on the brink, isn't alone. Humane Society hauled her and 83 others just like her into this makeshift hospital at the state fairgrounds. We're going to feed the baby some milk. This mother is so malnourished that her body won't produce it. Her four-day-old foal was rescued just in the nick of time. I know, Mama likes the milk too. In another stall nearby, come on, come on. it's try number two for the mayor who can't get up. When you try uh, 85 times to get up in the middle of the night and you just can't do it, you just quit. And that's, that's what she's down to. If she doesn't make it up soon, infection could set into her lungs. She has an open abscess here under her jaw. A problem that vets like Dr. Kimmins are stepping up to treat. Clean up and get some of the drainage out, infection out. Good deal. You. You're welcome. All right, I sweet pea. Right With one small job knocked out, it's back to the mayor still down in her stall. Only way to make sure she survives is this, we pick her up. And we're going to make a team effort here and she's going to get up. With help from more than six adults. Come on, baby girl. There you go. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. The mayor, who's now nicknamed Longshot, Heave it up, guys. Heave it up. Help her up. Finally stands on all fours the way she was intended. Everybody keep the same pressure we've got on her. One battle won. Nice work, guys. 83 more to go. Every day's a small victory here. Everyone says home is where the heart is. Family. It has everything to do with your family. But if you ask Patricia Coronado. I wake up in the mornings and I think, you know, I got things to do. And then I realized my kids aren't there. So it's really hard. Because I'm used to, you know, getting up and taking care of my kids, doing what they need. And now they're not there and I'm lost. Her heart hasn't been here for seven months. And frankly, it never was. Nowhere is a home for me if my kids, if my brother isn't there. I mean, that's, that's my family. That's all I have left. It wasn't bad choices that brought Patricia to Tent City, just a sincere case of bad luck. I was living with my mom and my grandma, and they both passed away last year, and uh, we were buying a house together, so when all that was going on, I lost my job, my car, my house, um, just kind of everything fell apart. It is daybreak in Nashville. And as the first rays of sun touch down on a sleeping city, 23-year-old Patricia already has purpose for her day. I just want a job so I can have a home for my kids. Four months ago, she found a way to get it. But like most things we really, truly want, Stop. Music City. I just take it day by day. It is. Um, I'll look at it. Um, we'll look at if it's it something wrong with it, just let me know and I'll okay. redo it. This dream takes patience. All right, so chapter nine, uh, development and birth. Patricia hopes becoming a dental assistant. What are those, those two, remember we call them the pipes? What is coming from the kidneys? Will land her a job. If you want to change your life, then do it. Um, you know, I can't want it for you. You can't want it for them. You know, the whole world can't want it for you, but she wanted something and she set out to do it, and by golly, she's doing it. Her day doesn't end in the classroom, but back on the streets. Selling the homeless newspaper to earn her bus fare. Okay. Thank you. Patricia isn't asking for pity, for charity, or compassion. Thank you, you have a good afternoon. She is simply asking for awareness. Being thankful for what they have for their families, for their homes, for their jobs, for everything that they have. Because I see people starving every day. I see people, you know, crying to be with their kids to just, it's horrible. And even though she returns here every night. Right now it's my home until I can find another one. Tent City is only temporary until Patricia can find a home for her kids, a home where the heart truly is. You know, a lot of people say, well, where do you live? And even though, you know, that's where I sleep every night, it's, it's not a home. It's no place for anybody, really. Amanda Hara, News Channel 5 HD.
I just enjoy it. The thrill of the search. Always looking for that next big. The possibility that something huge is just below surface. This is what keeps Mike Edwards pushing off into the water week in and week out. Today, Mike's expectations are low. Very rarely do you catch anything over three or four pounds. It's mid-afternoon on Normandy Lake, and we're close to the very spot. It was uh, July the 8th, 4.30 in the morning. Where Mike hit the jackpot. When I set the hook on this fish, it almost yanked the rod out of my hand. A nine pound largemouth bass landed in his boat. His nephew Joe suggested Gordon Mole's taxidermy in Laverne. He says that was a huge mistake. I let him take the fish and that's the last I've seen of it. Years have passed and Mike has learned he's not alone. No, there's dozens of us out there. There's dozens of us out there that are missing their stuff. Shannon Spears took his elk to Mole's taxidermy. I just want my horns back. Joe Denton did the same with his bass. For him to just run off, it's theft. It, I look at it purely as theft. As for Mike. I was told it was a lake record. This big catch wasn't the one that got away. This is the one that was stolen from me. I just know it'll never happen again. It's a once in a lifetime fish. But it's the what if that keeps him hoping. The what if that keeps him searching. And most fishermen will tell you, it's always, okay, just one more cast. Just one more cast. You know, you see a stump sticking up or a rock pile and it's just one more cast. Amanda Hara, News Channel 5 HD. Every time you go, you're done. Right now, details about her are very sketchy, including for police. We're not the only ones here, but what we do know is that she graduated from MTSU with a master's degree. She's a registered nurse with Veterans Affairs, and that when the adoption agency called to check in in January, everything was fine. In September of 2009, this moment was captured on camera, the moment when Tori Hansen took Archim Savliv as her own son. He was a Siberian orphan. She, an MTSU educated registered nurse living on this property in Shelbyville. In Russia, it's a huge news. Um, I have to say, it's a huge, big scandal. Seven months have passed, and this video of Archim landing alone in Moscow makes it painfully clear that Tori Hansen had a change of heart. She adopted the, the boy only in, in September last, last year, and to drop him like, like this, uh, See, like what seven months later it just it's just nuts archim's adopted grandmother says she's the one who put the child on a plane thursday from nashville to russia and then paid a man two hundred dollars to take the child to the russian education and science ministry that's where officials found this typed letter tucked in archim's backpack in it tori hansen explains her decision saying quote this child is mentally unstable. He is violent and has severe psychopathic issues and behaviors. I was lied to and misled by the Russian orphanage workers and director regarding his mental stability and other issues. After giving my best to this child, I am sorry to say that for the safety of my family, friends, and myself, I no longer wish to parent this child. As he is a Russian national, I'm returning him to your guardianship and would like the adoption disannulled. Sincerely, Tori Hansen. Back in Tennessee, Russian, national, and local television crews descended on Shelbyville, hoping for clues in this story that even mystifies police. As a mother, I would love to just ask her, what are you thinking or not thinking? As a police officer, I'm suspicious as to has something occurred and is this why you got rid of this child? Police had about as much luck getting to Tori Hansen and her mother as we did. It's as if she's vanished and uh, no cooperation with the family to locate her. Hansen even agreed to meet with Bedford County investigators this afternoon, but backed out at the very last minute. She just called and said that her attorney didn't think it was in her best interest at this point. I, I'm sorry, I think mainly because of the media being here. Russian reports claim Archim described his adoptive mother as abusive, sparking authorities there to suspend all American adoptions. Can you blame them? Meanwhile, the mystery here in Shelbyville continues. Who is Tori Hansen? Where is she now? And why did this picture from seven months ago look so happy compared to the desperate images 
we woke up to this morning. All we need to do is to just talk to this mother. That's all we need to do. And again, reports are coming to us from Russian investigators that Archam is describing his adoptive mother as abusive. That's why Bedford County deputies are so interested in speaking with Tori Hansen. They want to figure out if abuse actually happened and if it happened in their county. If so, Hansen could face charges. Also, another big mystery here, Kristen, is the Bedford County school system is saying that Archam is not enrolled in either their school program or their at-home schooling program, and neither is Hansen's biological son, who's 10. His name is Logan. Wow. Um, so they're looking into that. They're trying to figure out if there are, um, you know, surrounding counties they may sure. have been enrolled in the school system. If not, though, she could face charges for that.